Hey everybody, welcome to Watch's Garage, and in this episode, Mantis. Mantis Tiller, I've got two of them. I'm going to show you uh, this one needed work, and we needed to go through it. Carburetor was completely ghouled up, varnished up, sat too long. I want to give a shout out to my sister. She actually, Aunt Deb, gave, uh, gave the family here a, a little present about a year or so ago. It's been sitting around for a while, a long while, but it's in beautiful shape. And so we're going to go through the carburetor rebuild on this. We're going to get this thing running again. We'll tweak it in tune a little bit. And then I want to show you guys a little bit about the maintenance procedures and the transmission and uh, a few other things and a little bit about how to set up the tines um, on these things. And there's a, two different ways to put them. Um, that's towards the end of the video. And also what can happen to one of these things if you don't take care of it because I've got another one. Uh, that a previous person did not take care of and it well we're gonna go over that and you're gonna see what happens if you don't do what what I'm telling you to do right don't be that guy all right I'll see you guys in a little bit let's get started on this project and hopefully if you guys have one of these or if you happen to find one at a garage sale a couple of things to look for and these are great machines good little machines I'll see you guys in a minute okay so I've already taken off the air filter and air filter housing and these carburetors are really easy to get off they have a universal screw it's got both phillips and flat i had a problem was they're on there tight so i went back for a flat head i tried the phillips head you can see i'm i'm really putting some effort into it so let's just take these two screws out and you'll see the choke plate or blade assembly and we'll show you that right there but you'll see it again when we go to put it back together. And once you take off this piece here, the carburetor is going to essentially be in your hand. It'll be ready to come off. We'll just have to remove the fuel lines and you have to remove the throttle cable. And that's like really simple. You'll see what, what that does in a minute. Okay, there's our choke assembly. Now this carburetor is very varnished. Uh, I could just see all over it. It's just, it's really bad. So we're gonna need to take this thing out and at least clean it. So here you can see a little bit more of the layout of the cable. You just push the cable forward or move the, th the carburetor back a little bit and it'll pop right out. And keep in mind guys, remember to take pictures uh, you know, on your own when you go to do something like this. Um, that way you're not just referring to my video or somebody else's video. Inspect everything, make sure the gasket's okay. And we're basically ready to get to the next step. Now, I want to pull the fuel lines off. If your fuel lines are good, you'll be lucky. These fuel lines are not all that good. But what I'm using here is like a release agent. It's a mixture of some gasoline and some transmission fluid. But you could use WD-40 or some kind of a penetrant. And if you squirt it on the fuel lines and twist back and forth a little bit on the fuel lines, they should come off. I'm actually pointing to the return line from the primer that goes back to the tank. It's just a short little line, goes right into the top of the tank. We need to remove the tank. It's going to be easier to clean it out and to set up the new fuel lines because these fuel lines are shot. So it's three bolts, one on the bottom, you'll see two up top. Uh, they're just Phillips head screws. And we can now empty it out, clean it out, wash it out with some gasoline, and we'll be able to get to the fuel lines. All right, let's give it a wash. It is really gummy. Well, the oil protects these. That's one of the nice things about two strokes sometimes is that the oil that's in the gas, this is Zama too, it will, the gas will kind of boil off and evaporate, but the oil won't, and so that's left. All right, let me wash this off, and I'll blow it, and then we'll take it apart. So this is just some solvent, collection of gas and gum out and brake cleaner and whatever. Works pretty good. All right, let me finish this up. Yeah, that's kind of, oh, that's hard. Well, I'll steal, I'll steal one. Actually, I might need this one. This one, oh, this was different. This is the, one of the big ones. They're, different, they're two different sizes, big and small. We shouldn't have to make any real adjustments, but 
we could cut, you can cut these off and sometimes you can pull them off. Like these look like they might actually pull off or just drive them off, but you gotta be careful because you'll bend these needles. It's gonna be stuck on there, guys. Let's put our release agent on. Here's a pry spot. We have a pry spot there, over there, maybe uh, here. There we go. Okay, it's just gummed up. Worst case, you can dump it in lacquer thinner. Let's see. All right, it's really. get all this apart. Here it comes. The release agent helps a lot. Yeah. Let's see if I have this one. I, I should. A little different than what I'm used to seeing. It's not terrible, but it should be like linen. And let's see if we can get it off of the gasket. Yeah, we can. And that'll tell you for sure. It's not terrible. It really isn't. This should work. I mean, that I got it wet with the release agent is kind of hard, but when they're really stiff, this might work. I mean, it'd be better if we put a new one on, but it might work. There we go. Yeah, we want to... Wow, it's like stuck on there. It's gooey. See the goo in there? Look. It's like, it's like, the, it's, like it's turning to grease. That's two-stroke oil. That has turned to grease. No, nope, there it is. There's your crack. Once it starts to turn white. Yeah, that's why you always want to play with them and test it. So this isn't too bad. We need to soak this. Gasoline is your best bet because when they're gooled up, you don't really want gum out because there's a, it's like a little valve in there and, and it will it'll give you some problems if you keep po poking at it. Low pressure air and... You, yeah, you want to be careful with gum out on that. Let's let it soak. You want something like a gasoline, with, and I have some, some thinners in there, so it's a little stronger than gas. Yeah, it looks like I want to soak all of this stuff. This doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of junk in there. I'd say probably the best thing I could do is soak it, all of it. It's not bad. See, there's a little bit of, this is the, this is, there should be a screen here. I don't see one. Let's pour some thinner in that too. And, and in that we'll get to in a minute. I think just a simple soak. Yeah, it's already starting to work. And what we'll do is we'll leave it sit and then we'll go work on the gas tank and try to deal with the hoses and then come back to this. That's not bad, that's a good shape. You don't wanna get anything else on there. Oh wait, what's that? See, there's a bit of dirt in there. It's around this area here, but mostly it's just a varnish. Yeah, see there was a bit of like dirt and oil right there on that valve, because that's a valve. I saw that. Let's see here, just go like this. I'm gonna take one of these acid brushes and I just trim off some of the end to make it a little bit stiffer. And we can go in here and 
We'll still blow it through with some gum out. All right, so I'm gonna go do a couple of things. We'll leave all this stuff sit. Let me go play with the hoses and see if I can come up with a solution to that. All right, there's a few different sizes of hoses. So we'll start off with the obvious. The smallest hose is obvious, all right? And it has the smallest inside diameter, which will fit on these little barbs, all right? These little things here, um, nice and tight. There's a medium hose, and one medium hose will have the smaller inside diameter, just like the little outside diameter hose. And the other one will have a bigger one inside diameter. And of course, that's not very common and it won't fit on too many of these. I buy them in a multi-pack. And then this is also a medium hose. Okay. But it has the correct diameter to fit on these guys. Okay, it really is the correct one. Then there's a big hose. And of course, you know, that's self-explanatory and it's got a big inside diameter. So I'm gonna to try to work. I have some pieces left, I gotta order more. I gotta put this on my, my list. So we know this is the length that we're looking at. So let me see what I have left over. We gotta to try to fit it. All right, so since I don't have any too much of this smaller hose, I like to use these. I get these out of a lot of machines. I save them. They're just adapters. They're just, you know, fittings. Basically splice adapters. So I cleaned that out. Just blew it out with compressed air and some gum out and everything. It seems fine. We'll put that in. And that should be fine, right? And then I'll trim it. Now... I think it was something like this length here. And you can always dump the excess. So we'll cut it here. But we may have to give it a loop or whatever. So I think we'll do that on the machine. And then the others, it doesn't really matter, right? So we have our vent. So since that doesn't really matter, I can use a longer length. And then one piece is just, is just a return line. So I have enough, okay? And here's a tip. If you're having a problem getting it on, just flex the lines out a little bit. And then you can also put a little bit like two stroke or a little oil or something WD on that. And that'll help you get it on. There we go. That's on there. Right? Now this guy went here. Now these have those rubber Grommet. So if the rubber grommet's bad, you're done. You need a new grommet. And you can actually order the correct setup. It's one piece, kind of. All right, so now we just have one more to do. And this is just a short piece. So where did the one that broke off go? I got interrupted, so I'm losing stuff. I'm just going to find the one that broke off. Make sure you clean your cap out. And I'll put that one that broke off on. I think it's just, it's about this length. So we'll just cut a, a section of it. And now this is your return. All right, that should work. You want to make sure they're fitting pretty tight because this is a seal here. You need, a, it has to seal because when you push the primer bulb, right, you're actually sucking on one end and pushing on the other. So in order for that to work properly, there has to be some kind of seal. All right, we're ready to put this on. We gotta work the carburetor. I'm gonna pop this back on the machine. All right, let's get this stuff cleaned out a little. Just take that brush and, doesn't look bad. Yeah, it's looking really good. There should have been a screen right there. That looks good. I just want to put a little gum out through this. Yeah. 
Yeah, she's in good shape. That oil is like a preservative because it keeps the... The worst thing is the oxidation. That should do it. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to give it a blow at low pressure air. Off camera. It has no oxidation issues. And I don't, there's no junk in it. Let's get this guy. That's a nice shape. I don't see any issues. Blow that too. Now let's see this guy. This is this has got like a check valve in there. It's it's like a silicone rubber, so you don't want to hurt this thing. All right now. Yeah, and you, you can't exercise like every port because of that check valve. So I, I you know. It'll purge itself. It's, that's why it's been soaking. It'll either purge itself, I mean, just blow it lightly. I mean, it's been soaking for a while, and my buddy Juan was here. He picked up a machine, and every mic is coming soon, so we'll try to get most of this done. But it's been soaking for a while. We're going to call that okay. All right, let me clean up, and we're going to see if I have all the parts to put this together now. Okay, everything's in good shape, so we're going to go with what we have. Just kind of wipe it off, make sure there's no junk. You don't want to get any gum out or anything on these guys. I think that'll run. So, let's start off with this piece. And just a little bit of that solvent is all I did. Okay. That goes this way. You gotta move the throttle out of the way a little bit. And it lays down here. <clears throat> and he did get a new, I'll give you the part number for that in a minute, for the primer bulb. But if it works fine, if not, then we'll replace the diaphragm. The, the, it's like a, that's a fuel pump diaphragm. And this is the that plastic piece I just put in there. That's like a mylar. And those are your valves. All right. Now, this guy, it's clean. And then you get your gasket. So the diaphragm first, <clears throat> right? Should be correct. That goes that little part there. It's a tiny little nub. That's what presses down on the fulcrum. And we got a new primer bulb. And like I said, this is the bigger of the series. There's two different sizes. Carb's easy to get off, so if I'm, um, you know, I don't even think, we might even be able to actually just leave the carb on and replace that diaphragm. I'm not gonna touch the idle screws. You know, I haven't seen this thing run, but considering that it's kind of preserved in oil and it wasn't that dirty, I say, you know, let's give it a shot the way it is factory-wise. Probably all factory parts, except for our push primer and I guess then you know if I have to I'll come back in we'll do the diaphragm but it's nice and clean just stagger your tor tight you know torque sequence and try not to over tighten it just make it tight all right it's working 
a little bit of tranny fluid on there. And you can also put a little transmission. This this is tranny fluid and, and gas, mostly tranny fluid, really. It's perfect for stuff like this. It won't hurt it. Uh, it'll clean it, it'll lubricate, it does a lot of cool things. And if you put a little bit more gas in, it's more of like a solvent penetrating lube. Let's put it on. I'm just gonna put a little bit, of, just a touch of anti-seize or oil on these guys so that we can get them off again, right? In the future, hopefully it's the future, like as in like a long time from now future. Cause you don't wanna have to keep doing this stuff. All right, if you want, you can put a little bit of lubricant up in here. Also a little bit, uh, if you want to put in something a little bit stronger. You can put, uh, come back a little later and put uh, a little bit of white grease on that. But I think we're gonna replace this cable and put it on the other machine. Because the other cable is not broken up there. So I think if everything works good, We'll just get everything, you know, all the best stuff on one machine. And because she's been gummed up, this is the tranny fluid mix. Let's pull that plug. Yeah, she's a little moist, right? We'll clean that up in a bit. Let's pull it through. It feels nice, really nice. It's just carbon. Yeah, there's a lot of carbon in there. We'll put some more in. Sweeten up the gasket too. We don't want to do too much because it'll it'll foul it up, but we want to get it up. Yeah, this gets really sweet. This thing's like brand new. All right, now I just wiped it down. A little bit of super clean. Okay, so now this is really easy. All right, it's got like a a hole. Um, it's drilled that way, right, for the barrel. And so all you need to do. So let's orientate it. Just like that. So we're just gonna slip that on there. Just like that. All right, and then we'll we'll put this guy on. I'll just clean that off real quick. And then we'll put this on. Now if you want, you can actually test it just by screwing it in this way, but let me just clean this off. This only goes one way. There's like a little raised part there and that's what goes in here see and that holds that flapper valve in place so make sure that when you do this right that you've got it assembled right and you'll know because if you tighten down on it and that flapper choke flapper doesn't work you'll know what you did wrong we'll reverse it now that goes to the front Got to make sure that's on there, right? right. It'll tell you because it won't work. Don't, just don't over tighten it until you check the function. Let's sneak it down. Bring it tight. And then, yes, see, it's working. All right, now we should be able to tighten it. All right, nice, simple design. That's nice and tight. Okay, let's check it. Yep. You can put a drop of oil on that when you're done. All right, let me flip it up and we figure out what I want to do with the hoses. I'll show you. I just made a little loop, right? Now we can bury some of this back into the tank, but I think we're going to leave it like that for now. They had it like directly connected with no service loop whatsoever. This way, if you ever want to disconnect it and you got to cut the ends, you have some room. Okay, so we got the fuel lines on. Now these were the medium size outer diameter hose, but it turns out they're actually the larger diameter inside, right? Um, so I was just, oh, I did a quick cleaning on this. This thing is in beautiful shape. It's a, a notch style plug, it's an NGK, so it's got a little notch cut in the center electrode. You may not be able to see that. Check the gap, gap is fine, about 28 thousandths. Put a little no seize on it. Now this is a gasket style plug which means that if you put a new plug in, um, here, let me read you off the NGK part number while we're here. All right, but you should be able to just get yours in case somebody put a Craftsman in. It's a BPM8Y, BPM8Y on the NGK. Uh, those are nice. 
just in case yours, maybe somebody threw a, you know, a, a, a champion or something. Now, if it's new, you gotta seat the gasket. So it's gonna feel like you're stripping it a little bit. You'll feel the gasket compress. That's it right there. Okay. Check to make sure yours is clean inside of there. If you want, it looks good in there. You could put either a little silicon in there or a little chain wax will do it. Anything just to, you know, keep it nice. Won't rot. This way you can rinse the thing off and it's not gonna cause problems. All right, we're, we're beautiful. Let's get some fuel in it and then we'll push the primer button and see what happens. Um, the only thing I had to do is I had to turn around that top black piece around the other way. Um, it goes towards the gas tank. Both sides should be, you know, like that and the fuel lines. So that was my mistake because I keep getting distracted by everybody today. And Sue Mikey's coming. He should be here any minute. All right, get some fuel in it. Some Petras. All right, let's press uh, the primer. That's in the way, but I think we could stick that back there. Yeah. Something like that. Anything? No. Is the pickup sitting in? I don't think it's working. I think it's clogged. Yeah, let's push it upright. Hold on. I'm going to be out of your view. Yeah, she's clogged. Oh, wait, we got something going here. What'll happen is, it'll, see, and there's a little bit of a turd. I'll show you. See that little stain there? A little turd shot out. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, a little turd shot up. And as I say, you can't, don't be too aggressive with these things. Let's keep doing it. Hold on, let me put it upright again. Might be out of your view. It's trying. There it goes. She might fight us a little bit, guys. All right, I'm getting it. All right, it's basically full. See? It's got fluid in it. All right, we gotta get this thing upright. Yeah, it's just pulling fuel through. Feels good. Yeah, she's doing it. That's better. Now we're pulling air, right? Because this thing's, it's gotta be upright. Let me go find a spot to do it. I think we'll bring it outside. So switch is to start. We wanna pull the choke. We wanna prime it, because we were pulling a little bit of air before. And yeah, we gotta get full again. There it goes. All right, I think she's got it. Yep, she's pulled. All right, and we shouldn't need any throttle, I don't think. Well, let's just hold it. Ugh. Might be a little hard. Oh, it wants to go. Right, let's take the choke off. Let's give it a little. I don't want to give it any gas because. Remember, <clears throat> no, she hasn't been run. There we go. Send it to start. There we go. Okay. Oh, 
I'll use it, but my recommendation was if I was going to sell it, there's a lot of air bubbles in here. Um, that can also come from that pump diaphragm gasket. Uh, but it can also just be the nature of the beast. It's just, a, it's hitting a lot of air bubbles. Also, we're going to be using this in the dirt, so it's going to be under load. Um, I'm going to run it like this, and then I can play with these settings a little, and we'll test it when I'm ready to use it in the garden. And if I feel like it needs more work, then we'll just pop this off and replace that gasket, um, that diaphragm. It's literally right here. This switch is getting a little nasty. A lot of oxidation, also a lot of oxidation underneath it. So we'll just put a little bit of that on there and wipe it down. I just took the cover off, so I wanted to show you guys. Make sure your magnets are clean. This is in beautiful shape. We're going to put a little oil on these things here, and I'll show you that in a minute. But also there is a screen. You see that screen in there? I don't know if you can see it, but that's your spark arrestor. I noticed it was puking a lot, so I took this off just to make sure everything's okay. It's good, but then I lost one of the screws, fell back down in here. I don't know where it went. I can't find it. Um, so just be careful when you take that apart. Uh, let me put that, this, this back on, and then we'll come back in a minute. All right, a couple of things you can do. You can put a little chain wax on that, and also on the, on the uh, coil is there as well. You can shove some uh, nice lube into there now, right, which we'll do before we connect that. And you can also put just a little bit of chain wax on these guys because they'll, they have a tendency to jam up over time. And then lastly, you can put a little bit there, right? And then there's a spring pocket here. See if you can get a little bit into where the spring goes. It's got a little grease in it, but that'll work. All right, so I got a little spring pocket right over there. I think I got it. And then pull it, pull it through, wipe off any excess. All right, guys, now right, we're gonna close it up. All right, we're coming down to the last few things. So this I just put in my solvent that you saw in that container and brushed it a little bit uh, and then blew it off. These are the factory ones. They're really good. Some people want to put a little oil on them. You don't really need to. You know, keep in mind that these, these things, they don't really run. It goes a particular way. And after this, guys, uh, we want to take, I want to show you a few things. <clears throat> okay, so the manual says you need to check this every year and add grease in here. Um, so a couple of things we're going to do first is I always recommend you clean your machine before you do anything like this. We have to get all of the, the dirt away from this area before we check it. And also you got to pick out these screws, they're Phillips heads. So if you have a pressure washer, great. I went, and remember, I went to go use my hose and it was frozen solid. So I could, I have another hose I could have used, but just be careful. You might want to put some gloves on, right? If you slip and you hit these tangs, right, you're gonna, you're not gonna be happy about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean these out. I'll blow with the air. I got a pick, and we're gonna need. You don't want to strip these Phillips heads, so take a pick. Get in here and pick them out, and then I'll pull the screws out, blow with the air, and then I'll pull the screws out, and we'll be back in a minute. And I'll show you what we're going to do inside. All right, so I got it off, right? And this is just a nice, simple gasket. Look, it got a little bit damaged there, uh, but it should be okay. It's uh, kind of a cork and rubber, and I'll get you in close. But they want it just about filled up to the gasket surface, just maybe a little bit below, and it looks really good, right? It's definitely bathed in grease. This is like a new machine, so we don't really have to do anything to this. We could put a little bit more in, but they do warn against, that's why I say uh, just under, right? It will, uh, grease will dry out over time, and it will then move away from the gears, and you see here how it's just like actually just climbed up all over the gears. So we're okay there. We're fine. We don't have to do anything with that. I'm gonna go take a quick peek at the other one. Maybe we can see what's going on in there. So this doesn't need anything, and again, because it has like no hours on it. And and again, I, I'm gonna keep saying it, you know, 
Make sure the screws are tight, but you got to check this. You got to clean everything really good so that you don't wind up with any grease uh, getting contaminated with dirt falling in. So if you just picked up one of these machines used, right, this is your, your, your opportunity to potentially save your machine from doom. All right, this will kill it right here. And they say don't overfill it because it could raise the pressure inside and damage seals and cause problems, which would cause leakage, which would then lead to other issues. So if you see that it's been leaking, now they're recommending a lithium-based grease, right? Um, not a bad idea to stay with that. You could go with uh, Honda greases, or you can just go look for a grease, you know, a gear lube, a gear type grease that is black, usually has lithium in it, but sometimes they're white. I have some lithium grease that's white. It doesn't matter what color it is. It matters if it says lithium on it. Now, what happens if it doesn't say lithium on it? Well, if there's already grease in there, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You can probably just add a little bit of good gear grease in it, you know, gear, something for bearings and... I have some nice stuff. Let me go get it and I'll show you the container. Um, that would probably be fine. Look, don't get hung up on what kind of grease it is. If you need grease in yours and you have grease and you don't feel like running out, I get it. If you don't, you know, maybe you're a little low on cash or whatever it is, put something in there. Just don't put anything that's too thick. Let me show you the container. This says Valvoline automotive industrial general multi-purpose grease non-disc brake wheel bearing drums so it's not for disc brakes um and it's, it's it looks just like what's in there and uh if in a pinch i would use this all right let me check that other machine and uh i want to talk a little bit about get the camera and talk a little bit about which way the tines go all right just to show you what could happen now you notice there's a serious sort of bevel to the gear. Now again, I don't know it should be that way, but this one, what we, we would call this a crown gear, and there'll be a pinion gear that sort of turns on that. Um, it would have to, I don't know how it would be set up, but w there's at least one gear that's pressing against this, and it may have another gear that turns this way. So any of those gears could be damaged. Now, there's no clutch on this, right? If you spin it fast enough, that gear should turn. So I've got the plug out and I'm going to spin it with my drill. It's pretty messed up in here too. I can almost hear it swinging. Yeah, we're not getting anything. So this is shot. Okay, it's absolutely shot. Now, because I have one of these, right, we could keep a few things. I'm gonna. This is a better uh, throttle cable. The carburetor is probably jacked. Maybe we'll take the. I'll definitely take the ignition igniter because that's something that would uh, might go bad. We could take these and put these on the side, right? Have an extra set. Clean them up someday in the future and sharpen them. And um, yeah, I'm gonna take a few things. So this is what can happen. Like I said, I, I got this thing running, and it was running okay and then when you revved it up it just squeed and squealed and um, nothing really happened trying to repair the transmission in here good luck with that point here is guys uh look i got another gasket my gasket my gasket was a little screwed up but we could put this gasket up on a shelf right as an extra quickie gasket or to template to make another gasket um yeah Get in there and take care of this, guys. If it's been a few years, uh, get in there and grease it and get something in there, okay? Um, if you see any metal in there, yeah, good luck. All right, we'll be back in a bit. All right, let's talk a little bit about tilling versus cultivation. Now, according to Mantis, <clears throat> this is in the tilling position. So I want you to just look at the direction of these tines. Now this, you're looking at the side, so there's your handle, you would be here, right, where my hand is, you'd be over here. So this is behind. This is the front, and it would this would be rotating clockwise. 
All right, so you're looking dead on as the clock turns. So notice the angle of the teeth. It's very aggressive. It's angling. They all angle in sort of this direction forward. Um, and by doing that, it's this side is exposed and it grabs roots of weeds and things and it pulls it in here and rips and cuts. So that's tilling, right? You're digging up the soil. Um, and so this would be considered to be the right side blade assembly, and this would be considered the left side blade assembly, or passenger side, driver side. So to make it in the cultivation mode, you want it a little bit less aggressive, just turning over the ground, you would take this pack, put it over here, and then the left pack and put it over here. And then by doing that, the blades would be going in this direction. So as it's turning, right, it's less aggressive. It'll kind of roll through your garden uh, and creating little burrows and whatever and stirring things up. More of like a stirring action, less of a cutting action. It'd be a lot easier on you to do that. And uh, it should be pretty easy to do. So I'd like to go in here. I haven't been in this machine. And it looks pretty good. You can even put a little bit of chain wax on that. What I like about doing with chain wax is <clears throat> it's, it's going to dry, right? Uh, as opposed to being like a grease that stays full time. So it's going to create a bit of a dry lube effect. You can also put Teflon on here. And another thing you can put on there, maybe a little bit of silicone. That'll kind of dry. Uh, but a, a dry lube, any good dry lube would work in this situation. So we could take these off. Hopefully I don't tip the machine. Yeah, it's got to tip a little bit. And we could reverse them. Now I want, I'm going to be, I, I'm, you know, I really need something aggressive. Because uh, my garden needs to be started up. Let's see if I can get this to stay up. There you go. Notice it's the opposite direction as opposed to this direction. Okay, so it went from this direction very aggressive, pulling everything in, getting it caught into the cutters. Less aggressive, okay? It can't, it can't get pulled into here and cut. It's just going to be working on this side. Um, so hopefully that helps, guys. Um, let me take a look and see uh, what I want to do next, and we'll be back. All right, I'm going to use a little bit of graphite dry lube. Now, just be careful with this stuff, guys. <clears throat> don't get it on anything you don't want to get it on. Right, it stains, you won't get it off. So, let's just put a little bit on. It's hard to control. That should work. All right, so I want this one. I want to put it back to where it's more aggressive because we got to start that guard. I think that it says right or left, but good luck trying to find that. So it dries to a nice coating. All right, I'm going to do the other side, and uh, I think we're just about done here. We're pretty much done. I'm just going to clean up a few things on it. Can't get it off. Yeah, we're going to have to lube it up. Lube these things up, guys. All right, I'm going to have to use my air hammer and get some more lubricant on both sides of it. Lube it up. All right, guys, so I took apart the other machine. It's already in the pile I'm making for my buddy Juan. Give him a, you know, cut of the action. Uh, we like to work together on a lot of things, so I want to make sure that, you know, he gets a certain amount of the debris. Um, got a lot of really good parts, coil, a, a cable, because the cable on this machine is uh, a little bit, you know, it's been cut, but it still works fine. Ignition, a carburetor, who knows if that's any good. Lots of little bolts. I've got... Uh, I mentioned this earlier, these are the little pieces that go on the pull starter. They, the springs break, they get jammed up. You know, the pull starter, I got the tines, I got just the on-off switch, just a bunch of good stuff. I think that'll help me keep this machine going well into the future. I won't have to buy anything else, hopefully, for a long time. Didn't take the motor, didn't take anything like that. You don't want to be fooling around with that. Um, too much effort. Uh, but that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you got some good tips and tricks out of this. Take care of your machine if you find a good one. 
um, get it up to par, but don't forget, um, you want to keep these machines in good shape, and the weak link in this, I think, is going to be the transmission, all right? So deal with that, check that regularly, and I will see you guys in the next one, and thanks for watching. Watch this garage! Like and subscribe. Leave a comment.